Okay, today we're gonna to be talking how you can 100% legally own a machine gun. Okay, to the YouTube people who will be watching this and flagging it, we're not going over how to modify a firearm to be a fully auto. We're not going, we're not even gonna be showing a firearm. We're gonna be talking about the legal methods in which somebody can own a machine gun. So please don't ban this. Okay, unfortunately, there is no cheap way to own a machine gun. There's two ways. Essentially, you can either get one before 1986 or you can become a manufacturer. That's pretty much it. I'm going to talk and break these down, um, and there are some nuances to the manufacturing side. So I'm going to use some visual aids to kind of help explain that. Okay, so essentially there are two primary methods in which you can go about as a civilian to get uh, fully automatic weapons. So the first one is the easiest but the most expensive, and it is to go out and obtain what's called a transferable machine gun or trans transferable full auto. These are machine guns that were made before 1986, made in the United States before 1986. Unfortunately, there are only about 170K thousand of them in existence. I'll put an exact number right here on the screen of how many there actually are, because I can't remember, um, which means there's a limited supply, which means they are extremely expensive. So as a result, you're going to be paying anywhere from like 12,000 to like a hundred plus thousand dollars. Um, so they're really expensive. The nice part is, is you can get them as a civilian, just the way you would get a regular NFA firearm, like a suppressor. So yes, there's still background checks, fingerprints, um, ATF form four, waiting period for that approval. Uh, but once you have it, it's yours. It can hang out with your other uh, guns. You can put it in an NFA trust. And then once it's in an NFA trust, uh, you can just treat it like a regular firearm and you can keep it forever, really. Um, so that's great. I'll show you. Here's some examples of transferable firearms. So if you're looking to get like an AR-15 uh, pattern rifle, you're looking at, so here's one, a Colt registered receiver. So it's the receiver again that's registered. So you can get that lower and then put whatever modern accessories you would like on it. So you're essentially paying about $32,000 for a receiver and that's not even including shipping. Hopefully they give it to you for free. Um, and then your $200 tax stamp on top of that. So here's another guy registered. Um, and then here's another guy uh, for $42,000. So yeah. As you can see, they are extremely expensive, but you right now as a civilian can go to this website and you can go buy one right now. It has to ship to a, a, an FFL. The other way to go about getting a fully automatic machine gun as a civilian is to go through the licensing route. So essentially there are a couple different types of FFLs that you can get. So you can get your O1 FFL, um, and that's going to be uh, pretty common. You can get your 07. So your 01 is like your dealer. So you're just buying and selling them. Your 07 is going to be your manufacturer. And then there's also an 08 and 011, which is, they're like um, importers of firearms and destructive devices. Uh, we're not going to talk about those because there's all sorts of nuances that you have to deal with when in importing NFA firearms. You can do it, but this video, we're not going to talk about that because that's a deal for in and of itself. Okay, so with the 01 and 07, there are two types of machine guns that you can get. You can get what's called a pre-sample or you can get what's called a post-sample. So a pre-sample is going to be something that's imported into the United States between 1968 and 1986, that magical 1986 uh, deadline that we've seen before. So these ones, there's um, a different supply of these than the ones because they are not fully transferable. Um, you have to have a dealer's license to buy these pre-samples. But the advantage to these ones is once you lose all your licensing or you get rid of it, you decide you don't want to do it anymore, you can have these in an NFA gun trust and you can keep them forever. Just like the transferable ones, I'd put it in a trust and then you can add other trustees and stuff like that, but awesome. So these ones, unfortunately, because you can keep them, they are still pretty expensive, but you're looking at about 50% the cost of these fully transferable ones. Go look at some of these um, other uh, pre-sample ones. So here's a pre-sample, well, here's, here's a bunch of different pre-sample ones with their re respective price tags. You notice they are cheaper. They're still very expensive, but they are cheaper. So here's an HK. Um, it's an AR-15 pattern rifle. 
Um, it's again, you're paying for the lower, but then once you get that lower, once you get this lower, again, you can put kind of whatever accessories you want on it. You have to have all your FFL and salt, salt paperwork and all that uh, to, in order to get this. Hence the reason it is expensive, but still cheaper because you can keep it once you lose all your FFL good stuff. Okay, the other method is to get a post sample. So a post sample is gonna be after 1986. After that, you have to get, uh, uh, you have to have your license, um, and then you cannot keep these once you lose all your licensing. So uh, your 01 is gonna be $200 up front, and then it's gonna be $50, uh, $90, sorry, every three years after that. And then also, you can't just have the FFL, I probably should have mentioned this before, you have to pair this with a SOT. Uh, for these ones, it's gonna be a SOT 3, for these ones, it's gonna be a SOT 2, and for these ones, it's gonna be a SOT 1. We're not gonna talk about those, so we're not gonna worry about that. Okay, so your SOT 3 is gonna be $500 a year. Also, to get a post sample, because you have an 01, you can't manufacture, so you have to get it from somebody else you can, and that's gonna require a letter uh, from your law enforcement. And they're gonna have to say that they wanna try a specific machine gun, you're gonna have to ride no 2, FFL, so you can manufacture it, um, a company, get it in, uh, to have the law enforcement agency try it out, then you can hang on to it for as long as you have your license. And once you get rid of your license, you have to transfer it to another FFL. You cannot hang on to it or else you will end up uh, behind bars and be all sad. So let's not do that. Okay, the other FFL is this 07. Again, all these pre-sample stuff, all this, um, still applies to the FFL 07. Okay, um, the difference, the nuances with getting an 07, I have or 10, 10 is for destructive devices. We're not really gonna worry about that. And same with the 02 and 09, this is for pawn shops and this is for um, uh, dealers of destructive devices. We're really not gonna worry about that. You might do the pawn thing, but okay, let's get real, probably not. Okay, so, uh, so we have our 07, we fill our paperwork for our SOT 2. I have videos on that, I'll put them here. Um, and then once you get all that, uh, you can, in addition to the getting the pre and post, you can actually manufacture your own. These are going to be uh, post sample. So again, you can manufacture, but because it's a post sample, you can't keep it. So that's lame, even if you build it. The nice part is, is rather than paying somebody else for that, you can do kind of whatever the heck you want. You can fill out a form too. You no longer have to pay your $200 per uh, tax because you're already paying your SOT, so you don't have to worry about that. So that's super nice. Um, and then you can manufacture as many as you want, and then you can keep them until you lose your license and then you get rid of them. So that's unfortunate. So honestly, if you're looking for a long term machine gun that does not require any uh, upkeep in licensing, you are going to be looking for a transferable one that's extremely expensive, or you're going to be wanting to get your licensing for a short period of time and get a pre-sample machine gun. And that is really about it. Um, so no matter what, you're looking at, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 for all this. So it's not cheap, but it can be done. So that's pretty much it as far as getting your um, a machine gun. It's expensive, but can be done. Okay, guys, I hope all that made sense for um, being able to get a machine gun. Uh, it's really expensive, but you can do it. If you have any other comments or thoughts on owning a machine gun, uh, please put in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, you either got to get a transferable one or get your licensing and then get a pre-sample and then you can keep it essentially indefinitely. Okay, guys, thanks for watching.